What's up, guys? So in this video, we're going to talk about the Round Hill Sports Betting and iGaming ETF ticker symbol BETZ. So right now, I'm looking at this chart on TradingView.com. That's the software that I use to record most of these videos. And looking at the chart, the stock is uh, well, actually, ETF. The ETF is down uh, a little bit. So as we can see here, over the last um, month or so the ETF is a down about five percent so I wanted to um, kind of make this video to kind of give you guys uh, my thoughts on this ETF now normally uh, full disclosure I don't actually own any ETFs right now the majority of my funds are invested in stocks because I believe stocks have the best appreciation but um, due to some recent events and kind of seeing that online sports betting and, and, and online gambling in general has just been growing so much around the world and with many people expecting sports betting markets to explode i just thought that this etf uh, could have a lot of value for some of you guys out there that instead of buying a bunch of individual stocks you kind of wanted to just put your money in this etf and let it ride so let's kind of take a little bit more in-depth look at this okay so here we are on the website so this etf is launched by Round Hill Investments. So as you can see here, basically the simple description is the Round Hill Sports Betting and iGaming ETF, ticker symbol BETZ, is designed to offer retail and institutional investors exposure to the sports betting and iGaming industries by providing investment results that closely correspond before fees and expenses of performance of the Round Hill Sports and Betting Gaming Index. So guys, what basically an ETF is, it's, it's like a mutual fund, sort of, that's basically traded on the stock exchange. So if you guys aren't familiar with mutual funds, mutual funds are basically a huge collection of stocks and big brokerage companies like um, Fidelity and Vanguard those are some of the biggest ones uh, they offer mutual funds and then they charge investors a expense ratio it's just basically a collection of stocks the reason why people are attracted to ETFs is that you can change uh, you can trade ETFs like stocks so ETF stands for exchange traded fund and it's just kind of a simpler way because when you buy into a mutual fund you've got closed-end funds you've got open-ended funds so a lot of times a lot of funds for example on Vanguard aren't available to investors because they're closed off so ETF is basically traded like a stock anyone can buy into it so as we can see here guys the fund launched uh, it launched on June 4 so it was about 12 days ago as recording this video and it has around 30 holdings so now let's look at some of the information that's listed on the New York Stock Exchange and the expense ratio is uh, uh, 0.75 percent so that's actually a, a slightly high expense ratio is much higher than some index funds out there guys so that is one drawback I would say the expense ratio is pretty high but I think that the ease of use when it comes to this ETF is very useful so as we can take a look at this ETF we can see that we can take a look at the performance so it's basically it went up a bit and then basically it's it's basically right around its uh its ipo price so basically you're pretty much flat on this etf but like i said it's only been trading for less than two weeks so you can't expect much to happen there so let's take a look at some of the top 10 holdings so this is the interesting part of the video that i wanted to get into guys and i want to kind of share you guys some um information on these companies so let's just let's just go right down the list so the number one holding in this company is a company called GAN so let's take a look at that one okay so GAN this one this is a company uh, that's based in London it's the number one holding in the bets ETF so this is actually a recently newly IPO company as well as you can see here it started trading on May 4th and if we take a look at the website it says the number one online gaming platform in America so basically they are a software as a service company they provide software for online game gaming and online gambling casinos and if we uh, we take a look at the investor relations we can see GAN, GAN is an award-winning provider of enterprise software as a service solutions for online gaming casinos so guys uh, the reason why this is probably the number one holding in the bets ETF is simply because uh, software stocks have done really really well obviously you guys are familiar with companies like Microsoft and things like that uh, just software companies have done really really well over the last decade or so even the last 20 years and uh, this company is going to be providing a lot of the software that a lot of uh, online gaming and uh, sports betting companies are going to be using so this would make sense that this would be uh, one of the biggest holdings uh, the second biggest holding is DraftKings so let's take a look at DraftKings okay so now DraftKings so DraftKings is a company that I'm extremely bullish on simply because I have lots of experience 
uh, with Daily Fantasy Sports, and uh, they also are the number one leader in a leading online sports book and Daily Fantasy Sport company in the United States, guys. So as you can see here, the company, they're heavily involved. They, they have an online casino, a sports book. Uh, and they run many, many, many fantasy sports. So if you guys watch one of my previous videos, you'll see how bullish I am on the stock. And the stock has been on an absolute tear ever since uh, from year to date. So the stock is up 291% year to date. So it's been one of the best performing stocks uh, of this year, in my opinion. And I think that's another solid holding for this ETF. So then, uh, as we can see here, the third holding is Kindred Group. Okay, so Kendra Drew, this is a, a company based in stock. Okay, so Kendra Drew, this is a company based in Stockholm, Sweden. And as you can see here, it says over the last 20 years, Kendra Group has brought together 11 of Europe's most successful online gaming brands, forming one of the largest online gambling companies in the world. We offer 25 million customers a great form of digital entertainment. So this company, actually, I couldn't find it um, actually. Uh, it's not traded on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or something like that, but uh, it's, a, it's a pretty solid company and it's based out of Sweden and uh, I think it provides a more uh, diversified, um, you know, a diversified portfolio for this ETF and it's the third largest holding. So now let's check out Flutter Entertainment. Okay, so Flutter Entertainment, this stock trades on the OTC. So again, it doesn't trade on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. Trades under OTC under PDYPY. And Flutter Entertainment, they actually own uh, DraftKings' biggest competitor, which is FanDuel. So uh, this company is based out of Ireland, and, and they own FanDuel. So this is another way to kind of get more exposure um, to the FanDuel because DraftKings and FanDuel, those are basically the two of the biggest uh, online sports betting uh, books uh, in the United States and uh, DraftKings is the number one player in America and the second player is Flutter Group. So Flutter Group they own a bunch of different sites so like a, a conglomerate of sorts and uh, so that's the fourth largest one in the portfolio and then we have GVC Holdings so let's check that that's out that's another sports book as well Okay, so GVC Holdings, this stock trades on the OTC again. Once again, it doesn't trade on a major stock exchange. You'll kind of notice this with a lot of these uh, overseas companies. The ticker symbol is GMVHF. And as you can see here, this is another big sports, uh, sports betting and gaming group. So as you can see here, it says one of the world's largest sports betting and gaming groups. Uh, they basically have lots of different... Um, Lots of different platforms, and you guys have probably heard of some of these. They own some of the most famous ones, including BWIN, Sports Betting, Party Poker, Party Casino, and Foxy Bingo. So for you guys based in Europe, uh, you probably have seen, uh, whether you guys watch sports or things like that, you've definitely seen the advertisements for these uh, companies. So like I said, they're based in the Isle of Man, so that's another big one. And then we have some uh, the the five smaller holdings. Uh, to, you know, to kind of keep this video a bit shorter, I'll just quickly go through these. I just wanted to go through the five biggest ones, and as you can see, Penn National Gaming. That's been a stock that's been on a tear, so I want to show you guys that one. So another casino stock that has rebounded very nicely from the whole um, situation. You know, I don't want to mention it to trigger algorithms, but you know, you know what's been going on lately, guys. So that situation. This has been a stock that's benefited from it a lot. Gaming. Now, this is a stock that it was not on my radar, but it was a, it looked like an excellent buying opportunity. So it was trading at around $37, went all the way down to $4, and now it's basically bounced right back where it was. So um, that's another that's another stock in portfolio, and this is a, basically a casino stock. So as you guys probably know, casinos are opening back up, especially in places like Las Vegas. So uh, this is definitely a a good. Uh, stock to own and it's a part of this ETF and then the other parts of the last parts of the top 10 holdings are scientific gaming court out of the United States Churchill Downs that's a very famous one we'll check out uh, these two in a second uh, OPAPSA I gaming based in Greece and William Hill that's another very very popular sports book so now let's just go over these two I want to go over the last two traded ones in the United States and then these are obviously uh, either OTC or, or OTC stocks. So Scientific Games Corp. Okay, this is another stock that has kind of rebounded from the situation. It hasn't come up uh, back uh, nearly as much, 
but it's another key part of the, the portfolio. Okay, so Scientific Games, I'm on their uh, website. So as you can see here, they're a global leader in gaming and lottery industries and admissions and empower customers by creating the world's best gaming and lottery experiences. So they're headquartered in Vegas with 9, 000, over 9,000 employees worldwide. So they offer a lot of different games as well. And now here looking at Churchill Downs. So this is why the last stock I'm going to cover this video. This video is starting to get a little bit longer. You guys can check out all of these stocks very simply by just heading over to, you can use software like TradingView or Yahoo Finance. Uh, the thing about some of these stocks is some of these stocks I listed in the video are traded on Robinhood. So you, and so you won't be able to trade these stocks if you're using Robinhood or Webull. So if you want to trade OTC stocks, be sure to use like a full service broker like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, or something like that. So Churchill Downs, this is another one. Now this company is famous for their racetracks. Uh, they basically run uh, sports books where you can bet um, on uh, basically horse races. And uh, but they also have uh, they also have different gam other gambling offerings as well. And they're very famous for the Kentucky Derby. So guys, uh, that about wraps it up for the top holdings. You guys can check out all of these on the site. So where do I think that, uh, do I think that this is a good long-term investment or well? Well, I really think it's important to look at a couple key factors. So the first thing I want to look at is uh, Robinhood ownership. So that definitely gives us, so I like to look at Robinhood ownership simply because I feel like Robinhood uh, basically is showing us what's happening across a lot of brokers. So Robinhood is probably the only broker that is very transparent in ownership numbers and they provide all this information through their API. So, you know, I would assume that if this stock is being bought up and Robinhood is probably being bought up in other brokers as well, Webull, uh, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, um, you know, whatever, whatever broker or trading app you guys are using. So as you can see here, the ownership has skyrocketed. So when the, the ETF first debuted, it only had around 12 people holding it that first day. And then now it's sitting at around 19,000. And the reason why so many people are probably buying this on Robinhood is because um, there's a lot of future progress and potential for the online gaming and sports gambling industry. So as you can see here, there's an article on market watch says investors are making big bets on the sports and gaming etf and as you can see here uh basically this etf has gotten a lot of attention and here you, as you can see here it says uh that's remarkable vote of confidence for a fund that's only a few days old i'm a fan of this fund if you believe online sports betting is the next big thing this fund will capture everything from back office infrastructure to front facing retail plays so um you know basically why people are interested in this fund is that uh, you know? It's basically just a way to basically you know invest in the entire online gambling and sports betting industry. And the nice thing about this fund is that this is a way to kind of profit from the rise in sports betting. So as you can see here, it says sports betting market expected to reach eight billion by 2025. And um, you know I've seen these trends all over the world. So not just in the United States, but even in Asia as well. Places like China, where gambling is huge, and there's just been an explosion in online gambling. And I think a lot of people are realizing that uh, you know it's just a lot easier to to bet and gamble online than it is to go to a casino and a sports book. And with social distancing in place, we're going to see a lot more people uh, betting online rather than being in large crowds and things like that. So as you can see here, it says investment firm Morgan Stanley predicts the U.S. market would generate almost $7 billion by 2025, up from $833 million in 2019, guys. So uh, that's a huge, huge jump, and I think that this ETF is a way to basically profit from those huge rises. So obviously, guys, you know, the takeaway on this ETF would be uh, if you're looking for a way to invest and you're not interested in buying, say, DraftKings or you don't want to buy a gain or, or any of these individual stocks, this could be a nice, a nice, simple and easy way to, to buy this ETF. So uh, the expense ratio probably is the only downside that I have. And the good thing about stocks is you're not paying expense ratio, but ETFs are a lot more diversified, so a lot more safer. So for me, I would say that I think online sports betting and gaming is going to absolutely explode this decade. And it's one of these other industries, guys. It's just like electric vehicles. It's just like... Um, you know, uh, companies like Aurora Cannabis and, and Canopy Growth and these cannabis stocks and things like that. All of these companies and all of these industries are fairly new or they're not new, but they're just becoming in the limelight. And with more, uh, you know, American legislation that is going to allow sports betting and, and, 
and online gambling to kind of exist right now. It's only in a few states, but as states open up over, you know, over the long run, you know, needing that tax revenue to come in to generate more money, I think that this ETF is a good way to play it. So I know this video's gotten a little bit long, guys, but I just wanted to kind of go through and give you guys as much value as I can since it's the only uh, sports betting ETF out there. I figured it was a good idea to kind of give you guys an in-depth look on what I think. So my future price target for this, well, it's kind of hard to give one since the Fund's only been trading for two weeks, but uh, I'm very bullish on DraftKings stock, so I would expect this ETF to follow as well. I wouldn't be surprised if you could get perhaps maybe 10 to 20 percent uh, annual returns on this ETF. This could kind of be a really low risk, uh, simple way to kind of invest in online gambling, and it is going to absolutely explode during this decade, guys. So make no mistake about it. Um, you know, incomes are up all over the world, and more and more people are gambling online so be sure to check out this etf so that's it for now guys i hope you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content and smash the subscribe button for more videos uh full disclosure i own shares of DraftKings stocks so i'm going to be updating guys on this etf as well as DraftKings and other potential plays out there so that's it until next time guys take care